Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 30th of August. Indian PM Modi condoles Pakistan flood deaths as incessant rainfall and floods batter both countries. IMF approves the release of over 1.1 billion US dollars bailout funds to Pakistan. And Sri Lankan President outlines reforms, says IMF bailout talks in final stage. And now for all the details. Floods triggered by unusually heavy monsoon rains have wreaked havoc in parts of India and neighbouring Pakistan, overwhelming thousands of people. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi condoled deaths due to the natural calamity in neighbouring Pakistan on Monday. Seasonal monsoon rains from June to September caused deaths and mass displacement across South Asia every year. As parts of South Asia grapple with unusually heavy monsoon rains and flooding, many low-lying areas across India's northern Uttar Pradesh state were inundated with the rivers flowing above the danger mark. The situation has forced evacuations in the cities of Prayagraj and Varanasi as the swollen river Ganga has inundated homes and other buildings since the last three to four days. Residents said the water flow is low but on the rise. Visitors to the holy cities known for ancient Hindu temples said they were facing difficulties to commute, with most areas partially submerged. It seems like a sea like a sea. And the water seems like a sea. There are many water. And the water is a lot. Some people are not able to go. Meanwhile, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday took to Twitter to express condolences over mass deaths due to devastating floods in neighbouring Pakistan, which have killed over 1,100 people and affected over 30 million. Reports suggested the Indian government might consider to provide humanitarian aid to Pakistan, with which New Delhi continues to have strained ties. Pakistan had announced a national emergency last week describing the floods as a climate-inducted humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. And in news from Pakistan, the death toll due to unprecedented flooding in Pakistan climbed past 1,100 on Tuesday as people reckoned with the effects of the natural calamity, which has affected nearly 33 million. Those displaced have pleaded for immediate help, while the government struggles with relief efforts. As waters receded, people affected by devastating monsoon floods in Char Sada in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa said they had tried as best they could to save people, livestock and property as they reckoned with the effects of the disaster which has left more than 1,100 dead and affected more than 30 million across the country. Powerful flash floods in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa caused the Kabul River to swell sweeping away a large bridge overnight, cutting off some districts from road access, while forcing thousands to flee their homes. We saw that we had to save our lives and save our children. After that, when we came back, the water was very much more. But we had to save our lives. We had to save our lives. And when we had to save our lives, there was no chance to come here. The water was very much more. In Rattodero in Sindh province, people displaced by floods took shelter in makeshift huts set up along dry patches of roads. Large parts of Sindh among the hardest hit provinces have been cut off after the floods washed away roads, infrastructure and bridges while washing away crops. <laughs> Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif also visited some of the relief camps on Monday as officials and medical personnel briefed him on the severity of the situation. Pakistan has appealed for international help and some countries have already sent in supplies 
and rescue teams amid the crisis. More news from Pakistan. The International Monetary Fund has approved the seventh and eighth reviews of Pakistan's bailout program and allowed for a release of over 1.1 billion US dollars to the cash strapped country. The funds will be a lifeline to the South Asian country and devastating floods, which have inflicted damage of estimated 10 billion US dollars. The IMF International Monetary Fund Board has approved the 7th and 8th reviews of the Pakistan's bailout program, allowing for a release of over 1.1 billion US dollars to the cash-strapped country, the government and lenders officials said on Monday. The IMF agreed to extend the program by a year and increase the total funding by 720 million special drawing rights or about 940 million US dollars as per the current exchange. The funds will be a lifeline to the South Asian countries suffering from devastating floods which have inflicted damage of at least 10 billion US dollars according to the country's planning minister Ahsan Iqbal. IMF Deputy Managing Director Antoinette Sai said in a statement that adhering to scheduled increases in fuel levies and energy tariffs is essential as Pakistan's economy has been buffeted by adverse external conditions. Finance Minister Mifta Ismail on Twitter welcomed the IMF decision and thanked Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif for taking painful corrective economic measures and saving Pakistan from default. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves have fallen to levels that cover only a month of exports and its economy is wrangled with a massive current account deficit and high inflation. And moving on, a former lawmaker in Pakistan, Nisar Panwar, was arrested on Monday night by police and paramilitary rangers from his residence in Karachi city after he filed a petition in Sindh High Court seeking lifting of ban on speeches of Altaf Hussain, the founder of MQM Mutahida Qawmi movement. It also seeks permission for political and welfare activities in the country. The court was expected to hear the matter on Tuesday. Nisar's son, in a video message on Twitter, demanded his immediate release and expressed fear his father's life is in danger. MQM, a mainstream political party of the Muhajir community, has dominated Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, since the 1980s. When security forces cracked down on the party in the 1990s, Altaf Hussain sought asylum in the United Kingdom. Even from exile in London, Hussein has been a vocal critic of Pakistan's military and often blames it of using force to muzzle dissenting voices in the country. And countries should restart some development aid for impoverished Afghanistan that was halted a year ago when the Taliban seized power, the UN aid chief Martin Griffiths has said, as the United States told Russia and China to put your money where your mouth is. United Nations aid chief Martin Griffiths told the UN Security Council on Monday that countries should restart some development aid for impoverished Afghanistan that was halted a year ago when the Taliban seized power. Afghanistan has long relied heavily on development aid, which was cut as the international community demanded the Taliban respect human rights particularly girls and women whose access to work and school has been limited by the Islamists. More than half of Afghanistan's 39 million people need humanitarian help and 6 million are at risk of famine, said Grafitz. Afghanistan's de facto authorities must do their part. Bureaucratic interferences and procedures slow down humanitarian assistance when it is needed most. Female humanitarian aid workers, both national and international must be allowed to work unhindered and securely and girls must be allowed to continue their education. The Taliban has not been formally recognized by any foreign governments and is still subjected to international sanctions which the United Nations and aid groups say are now hindering humanitarian operations in Afghanistan. International banks are wary of breaching sanctions and the United Nations and aid groups have been struggling to get enough money into the country over the past year. The United Nations has been trying to kickstart a system described as a humanitarian exchange facility to swap millions of aid dollars for Afghan currency in a plan to stem aid and economic crisis and bypass Taliban leaders. Grifitz said this plan was still under deliberation with the Taliban.
Meanwhile, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, said Washington was the top aid donor to Afghanistan and called out Russia and China. If you want to talk about how Afghanistan needs help, that's fine. But we humbly suggest you to put your money where your mouth is. Russia and China dismissed her remarks. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka, talks with the International Monetary Fund on a bailout package have made a solid progress. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe said on Tuesday as he presented an interim budget aimed at boosting revenue and mending the country's battered finances. Earlier, Japanese Finance Minister Shunichi Suzuki said that Tokyo will coordinate with other creditors to resolve Sri Lanka's deepening financial crisis, urging all creditor nations to gather and discuss the South Asian nation's debt at the same table. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikrame Singhe on Tuesday presented an interim budget to boost revenue and fight inflation in the country and said talks with the International Monetary Fund IMF on a bailout package have made solid progress. The budget revised up the island nation's deficit projection for 2022 to 9.8% of the gross domestic product from 8.8% earlier, while outlining a slight in tax revenue and a sharp net increase in expenditure. Unveiling the measure in Parliament, President Vikram Singhe added that the government would aim to rein in inflation and introduce legislation to bolster central bank independence. The island nation of 22 million people is battling its worst economic crisis since independence from Britain in 1948. Vikram Singhe, who took over as the country's president last month, is pushing to bring in fiscal consolidation measures, agreed with the IMF, which currently has a team of officials visiting Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan officials hope the budget will be followed by a preliminary staff-level agreement with the IMF for a loan package worth between 2 billion US dollars and 3 billion US dollars. Earlier, Japanese finance minister Shunichi Suzuki said on Tuesday that Tokyo will coordinate with other creditors to resolve Sri Lanka's deepening financial crisis, urging all creditor nations to gather and discuss the South Asian nation's debt at the same table. Vikram Singhe told Reuters this month that Sri Lanka would ask Japan to invite the main creditor nations to talks on restructuring bilateral debts. He said he would discuss the issue with Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in Tokyo next month. People with autism in general struggle with difficulties in communication, behavior and social interaction. With an initiative to bring out the talents of children with autistic spectrum disorder, a special fashion show was organized in India's southern Coimbatore city on Monday, which won hearts of the audiences. With an initiative to bring out the talents of children with autistic spectrum disorder and differently abled children, a unique fashion show was organized by Research and Development Organization in India's southern Coimbatore city on Monday. Almost 100 children took part in the show and were dressed in colorful traditional attire as Hindu god of protection Lord Krishna and his consort Radha. Boys were seen walking the ramp and posing with flute, whereas girls dressed up as Radha were spreading smiles around the event. This is not a simple fashion show. This is for the autism child and their differently abled children, these persons are not even getting any chance in the direct life, or they are not, they cannot uh, show their talents in the fashion shows or uh, any talent shows. It is very difficult to come out from their home. It is very difficult to have their talents showcased. That's why we have organized the first time, India's first kind of this uh, program. Autism is a disorder of brain development where the child has difficulty in social interaction and communication. Each child with the disorder is different and presents slightly differently. Reportedly, an estimated 3 million people live with autism on the Indian subcontinent. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.